From WHIP News, I'm Taylor Allen, and today I'm with Lori J. Burstyn Maxwell. She is the co founder and executive director of the DMAX Foundation. Along with her husband, Lee, Lori co founded DMAX Foundation in 2013 after the suicide of their 18 year old son, Dan. Prior to the DMAX Foundation, Lori spent most of her career as a buy side equity investment manager, research analyst, portfolio manager, and stock picker, focusing uh, for the most part on micro cap equities. DMAX clubs encourage students to talk about how they are doing, how their friends are doing, and how they can help each other. DMAX clubs are for all students, um, involves talking, activities, and fun because there are many ways that students can connect around mental health. So thank you, first of all, for even coming. Thank you for having me. <laughs> of course. So let's talk about, first of all, the summer campaign. That started in June 21st, and it's ongoing till about September 4th. So can you just explain to me what the thought process was behind that? So um, my son died in the summer, and we've done something every year to, in, me in his memory and, and really in memory of all the children that we've lost too early. And this year we decided to have uh, a campaign where we are asking people to vote for their favorite conversation starter. And there are things like, how are you doing? Um, you want to get a cup of coffee and talk, things like that. And so we're, we would love it if people would participate. Can I give you the URL? Yeah, just say it right on Okay, there. so it's, uh, it's a Facebook survey. Um, all you have to do is click on it and it takes about 30 seconds. Just click on your favorite conversation starter and share it with all your friends. Um, the URL is https uh, colon slash slash and then creating dash uh, conversations dash that dash matter. So like what's the importance of a conversation starter? Like, what was the thought process behind that? Well, we're, what we're all about is trying to ha help students have conversations that matter about mental health. And too many people and too many students and adults as well are not talking about mental health. Kids feel like they have to be perfect. Everyone else is perfect, they think. And if they're suffering from anxiety or depression or stress of any kind, they don't want to tell anyone about it because they're afraid that people will think badly of them. And people don't have conversations about mental health in general. And in fact, when our son was sick, and we knew he was sick for about a year and a half before he took his life, we felt that we couldn't talk about it. And he felt that he couldn't talk about it to his friends. He told us, but he, he was not able to talk about it with his friends. And so we decided that it was so important for students to be able to talk to each other. And that's, that's what the conversation starter is all about. You know, how do you have a conversation? It's not hard. You know, just say, how are you doing? I really want to, I really want to know how you're doing today because right? I really care. So, I mean, we talked a little bit about um, your son's history, but how did the foundation start? The foundation started um, after Dan died. We wanted to do something. And actually, he, he was an athlete. He was a three-sport athlete, and his friends suggested that we start these clubs. And they actually all said that they were about to head for college, and they were going to be in various places all over the country. And they thought that they would start clubs. <laughs> Turns out, because they were mostly athletes, that they did not have time to start the club. So we had to find some other ways to start it. But it was it was really a, they felt um, that they wished that they had been able to talk to Dan, and they and wished that they had spoken with him about how he was doing. Students who are having struggles feel isolated, and we wanted to break that isolation and break the silence. Now you have like a few chapters, I'll call them, in multiple universities now. You have Elon, Penn State, Drexel. Am I missing any? Those are the three. Okay, and how do you feel that it's flourishing? How, how do you feel it's going? Well, it took a while to get the first one started at Elon, and that was actually started by a friend of Dan's. Um, and that has been going on for a little over a year, and it's been successful. And then um, Penn State recently approved a club in the spring, and they just had their organization fair, and they had 100 students that were interested. Drexel uh, is just approved it like two weeks ago, and the Counseling Center is involved in training the student leaders in how to talk, how to listen, how to handle emergencies, and how to, um, how to make sure they're not doing therapy. So the Counseling Center has to agree to do that, and once they agree to do that, then they, students have to go through the process of whatever they normally do to start a club on a on college campus, write a constitution, get approval from the student affairs, et cetera. Now, your idea behind this club is actually really different because it's emphasizing students helping other students. 
Why do you think that's necessary, you know, as opposed to typical counseling centers that colleges usually provide? Well, the research shows, and, and students have also told us that students, many students don't like to go to the counseling center, or the counseling center is so stressed and under-resourced for the, the numerous people that want to go that it's very difficult to get an appointment. And they also feel that there's stigma involved. They don't want other people knowing that they're going to the counseling center. They don't want their parents to know. They don't want their employers to know. They're concerned about insurance issues. And they want to talk to their friends. I mean, there's studies that show that students really want to help each other and they want to, they want to be helped by their friends. Yeah, I really like how you, you mentioned stigma. And I was wondering what your opinion was as to, like, why do you feel that college-age kids don't really reach out for help that often? It's not college-age kids alone. It's, it's our population and probably the world population. I mean, people just feel like mental illness, and I don't want to just say mental illness because there are many other aspects to it, you know, just emotional stress, distress. Um, people in general are afraid that what other people will think of, of them if they talk about it. It's, it's the last bastion stigma about you know, some problems that, that we're having. And uh, it should be treated just like physical problems. You, you, don't, you, know, you don't have a problem saying I have a broken leg, or even today you don't have a problem saying I have cancer like you did uh, many years ago when people couldn't talk about it. Uh, now they can't talk about mental illness uh, or mental health problems, and we want that to stop. I know you had some statistics you wanted to share about this epidemic that, I would, that we would like to, you know, to really bring awareness to. Do you mind sharing that? Sure. Um, what we have found is that this is a, a study that goes on twice a year in the fall semester and the spring semester. The most recent data shows that 80% of the students in college are overwhelmed, 58% of them are anxious, and over a third are so depressed that they can't function, which is a very, very frightening thing to think about. And even worse, over 10% of all students that were surveyed um, have contemplated suicide. I just want to bring this back to Temple since this is um, the campus radio station. You talk about the process of really getting approved because I know that DMAX was approved back in December of 2016 and you're just jumpstarting this now. So what was that process like? So uh, the first thing we have to do is get uh, um, agreement by the counseling center that they'll do the, do the training and then they'll be involved. Then they'll be accessible to the students if the students, leaders need to talk about some issue that they are concerned about related to the club. A mental health issue. So the counseling center agreed to do that. The club still has to be actually approved by the student by student affairs, and the approval process won't happen until we have students that <laughs> want to start the club. So we are going to be um, attending a, a wellness fair uh, in a couple weeks, and that should let people know about it. Just students don't know about, about the DMX club yet. Since you are looking for students, like, can you tell me what the ideal candidate might be like? First of all, we want to find somebody who wants to be president of a club and wants to be involved in a with a new organization. The DMAX Foundation is only a few years old. And to be someone who wants to kind of be an entrepreneur and get other students who, they, who want to be involved, who wants to be a leader, uh, and who is passionate about our mission. So, like, what is the future, do you think, of DMAX Foundation? So we started at Elon. Um, we went to Penn State. We think that you know eventually we're, we're hoping that all the Penn State, all 26 Penn State schools will have clubs. Uh, we're now focusing on the Philadelphia region, and then after that, we want to expand and geographically, and eventually have clubs be nationwide. Well, that's really all I have for you. Is there anything you would love to share, like to our listeners? Well, I would love to share that if anyone is interested in being a leader or being a member of the club, that they should contact us at dmaxfoundation.org, and they can get in touch with us by email at dmaxclubs at dmaxfoundation.org. And that summer campaign, it's still ongoing, right? So people can still put in their votes for yes, the conversation starts? Yes, absolutely. And when people actually do vote, we really want help in um, having people uh, share this campaign with all their friends because the way that it will spread is virally. And so please vote and please share it with all your friends and ask them to share it. And we you know, we have a few hundred votes right now. We'd really like to get to 1,000 votes by Monday. Okay. Well, thank you so much for being here. It was a pleasure having you. Thank you very much. Of course. And I'm Taylor Allen for WHIP News. We'll see you next time.